Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian Freimhardt's Traffic and Trade Group, and this is your end of day market recap for Thursday, August 17th. All right. Uh, so welcome to today's mess. I mean, today's market. Um, just kidding. Let's get through. Uh, let's uh, get through the risk disclaimer first. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving any advice or recommendations. Please read the full risk disclaimer there. So yes, I will go through the usual suspects here, right? It is very much um, turned into a macro type tape. What does that mean? Well, it's looking at the, it's obviously looking at the technicals and the indices. It's looking at bonds. It's looking at the dollar. It's looking at the VIX and maybe a couple other things too. So um, I know, I think at, at this point, everybody is really tired about hearing about bonds. Um, <laughs> that was probably, I think, kind of re uh, uh, reached the uh, the pinnacle today. I, I don't I don't look at like what Google search um, is showing in terms of, uh, you know, what people are searching or what people are looking at. But I would think I heard so much about bonds today. I mean, this is the sixth, I believe it's the sixth day in a row that um, rates were rising on the long end of the curve, the 10 year, the 30 year. And, um, you know, I, I, for a while, I feel like I, I've been the only one who's been kind of talking about that. I, I certainly don't want to say the only one, but I've been mentioning the bonds, the bonds, the bonds and the dollar. Right. And then finally today, everybody kind of noticed. Right. And if you open up Twitter, um, you could see that there's a there's a lot of people talking about what what it translates into mortgages and so forth. So what I find kind of interesting uh, and I'll, I'll just kind of go through this kind of quickly. But, um, you know, and, and I did this whole analysis yet in yesterday's video. So I'm, I'm going to move on from bonds. I, I'll let everybody else talk about them today. But still you you look at like you know everybody's like oh my god you know you know could this go up to five percent we're already there for the two year so yeah i mean do i want things to settle down here and and i don't want to see rates go higher that's pain for for a lot of people and a lot of people who have to borrow whether it's for their home car or something else um credit cards uh i don't want to see people's rate you know rates go up so i i hope they they stay steady and um and they start to maybe even go down, but um, but the, but look at the two year, right? For as much as attention is like, oh my God, you know, this is what's happening with the thirty year and the ten year. Um, one's at four point four, and the other one's at four point three. Um, I made a joke earlier, and I said, if you're the two year bond, you say, hold my beer, because look at look at this up to uh, four point nine. Yields actually went down a little bit for that too. So again, you know, I let people who talk more about the bonds and the the yield curve, which was really um, inverted, and now is starting to um, I don't know which way, probably just kind of come more towards the middle, right? Because it was really inverted. Um, meaning that the um, short end of the curve had much more higher rates than the long end. So um, again, there's a lot of complexities with this. I, I know enough to get by and and I know um, as in mainly as an equity investor, what I need to know about bonds. Um, but I'm not any more of a, of a yield curve uh, inversion expert or anything like that. So we, you know, where are we in terms of TLT? We are testing those lows from October of last year. Um, I would go back into yesterday's video and and um, where I discussed um, you know what equ what equities did um, once bond yields stopped going uh, stopped going higher. Remember, we're looking at price here. Right. So yields go are, are opposite of this. Right. It's just how a bond works. When prices go down, yields go up. Right. So, um, you know, we'll see if if this provides some support um, as it did last year. And maybe we get some type of a double bottom. But like many things, when you're looking at technical patterns, right, you don't know that it's a double bottom until until a little bit afterwards. Right. Um, there's too many times I see people. Um, and it's the same thing right now with the market going down, trying to figure out when the, when the market is going to stop going down, right? Um, you know, in my experience, the, the, the best thing that I think people can do is actually wait for prices to start going up, right? I know everybody wants to time the bottom and think that they can figure out when things have reached their oversold level. The best thing that you could do is, um, you know, in my opinion, is, is start to kind of, um, you know, look at some of the short-term things. That will tell you. Right. Because um, you're just not seeing any type of confirmation yet that things are done going down. So, I, again, I, you know, I think cautious is the way to go and, and having patience. So I know I'm kind of getting to the punchline of this video, but it's just how it's done, guys. Anybody who tries to think that they're going to time this perfectly, 
right? That's that's more for I hate to say it, but that's that's more amateur trading, right? You want confirmation. Um, do I think that we're checking some of the boxes as we go along in this um, in this pullback, which has been getting deeper and deeper? Um, I do. You know, the the S and P uh, we we took out this version point of control, right? And I've tried to make sure that this is S and P futures. Spy also took out a version point of control. Again, they're going to have different volume profiles and different value areas because Spy trades differently than S and P futures, even though they track the exact same thing. Right, and they're interchangeable um, if you have the right ratio. Um, they have different volume uh, associated with them because S and P futures trade um, throughout, you know, almost all the way through the overnight session. They do close for what fifteen minutes nowadays, but um, you know you can trade S and P futures all night long. Spy is you're not going to trade that much. I think you can actually on some platforms try trade spy in the overnight session, but the but the volume is um is going to be very obviously very thin if it does trade um you know in the uh in the later hours all right so so bottom line is we're, we checked another box today right we did this in queues yesterday i talked about how there was a vpoc that was taken out unfortunately this did not find um you, you know a lot of the times the the virgin point of controls can be a reversal point right but um they because it, it is where a lot of um, volume has previously occurred that we haven't returned to, but unfortunately, that's not the case. But you know, it was the same thing on the upside, right? Momentum took us further, right? And then we kind of settled in to this. So, um, you know, they're not. I, I never want to th think that um, or tell somebody that these things are precise. You have to wait for some confirmation, right? Do I pay more attention once we take one of those out? Absolutely, right? Here is a, you know, if you look at a couple of these other ones, right? Here was a good reversal. This one was a good reversal, right? But they're not, everyone is not going to work that way. This one that happened in the queues just marked a huge amount of consolidation, right? And this one, um, price went right over. So again, there, every time that we get to one, we, we want to, you know, pay attention. But um, yeah, and and we'll see. Um, you know, the one hour, you know, we've got other ones down lower, right? You know, there's other places where this could get to. Um, IWM. Sorry, I'm jumping around here. Usually I'm a little bit more organized, but you know, I, I don't think I, if I went over IWM in yesterday's video, um, if I did, I must have done it briefly. But again, here's where we've uh, we've hit for this resistance double top for the year at 195.87, right? And on the daily chart, um, we did take out this. Um, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting that it was lingering down here like that. Um, you know, IWM was down 1.2 percent, and and again, this is like a waterfall type move down at this point. You know, 200-day moving average might act as as some support. Um, I did also see a, a virgin point of control taken out on the hourly, right? So again, these are these are interesting um, areas. These are um, notable possible pivots, but we don't know yet. We need buyers to start to come in. We're, you know, there, these things are not just going to go up magically, right? Buyers have to get interested, you know. So again, the, the VPOX, Virgin Point of Controls, are definitely interesting because buyers have been there before. It doesn't mean that they're going to return. And that's what you have to kind of wait for confirmation, right? So that's IWM taking out a couple levels to the downside, right? S&P also, um, if we just go to the five minute. So again, I if you notice, I, I'm looking at multiple time frames in here. But um, this did take out one, two on the five minute, all right? So you can go, remember, the value area on a five minute chart is just for one day, right? But you can go back and um, we go back uh, 180 days and you'll see that one should pop up here on your chart in just a second. Again, uh, thinkorswim takes a lot of time to 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 um a lot of time to crunch this data. So it's um they're doing some calculations in, in the background um when we're looking at some boom there it is right. So again, it's tough to see where this where this came from because again um so you can see uh, this is right around forty three eighty but you won't be able to see it on one screen. I have to kind of do this thing. Right and scroll back, and you could see that um, it's from all the way back in here, right? So um, yes, I do believe the market remembers. Um, if this starts to break, you can see more coming up on your screen now, right? So those are other version point of control. So again, 
you, you don't know which one is going to cause the reversal. So, so what, um, and regardless of virgin point, if you have these on your charts or if you don't, right, um, we still want to see a, um, a reversal. And that means price getting back above, um, you know, and starting to retake some of these things. Let's go back to the daily chart too, because again, I like to look at those shorter time frames um, because I am paying attention to um, what's going on intraday, not just at the end of the day. But yeah, I mean, so, so what do we know looking at this chart besides this being taken out? Price is way below the five, the, the 20, and the 50 day moving average. So, uh, you know, at the very least, right, um, we know that this is trending to the downside. We don't have any confirmation whatsoever that the bottom is in here. So, um, again, I'm going to just repeat myself because um, I think it needs to be re uh, repeated. You just have to be patient and wait for those institutional buyers to show up. Right now, it's kind of a buyer's strike, right? And um, any type of bounces right now are being sold into, okay? So um, I mentioned, I talked uh, quite a bit about bonds. I forgot to bring up credit spreads. Someone asked me about that. And then we'll talk about a couple of the market uh, internals. Um, so this is this is credit spreads. This is IEI over HYG. Again, it's not looking like there's just not that panic in the credit market. Uh, spreads are not, spreads did widen a little bit today, right? You could see this, and I'll, now I'll zoom in so that you could see this overall pattern. But you could even see back in March when credit spreads moved up a little bit. You know, I don't know. Does that does this box need to be checked in terms of we're not seeing, you know, maybe once we see a little bit of panic. Um, remember, in March, it was because the banks were going. Um, that was part of the problem, right, was that the regional banks were falling pretty decently. Right. And then if you remember that people once that happened, right, people started to move into more tech as, as a safety play. Right. So, you know, this is obviously that's not going on right this second. So, again, different every time there's a sell off, it's for different. There is, sometimes history can rhyme a little bit, but um, but it, there's different reasonings. Right. For for every time that we see a pullback. Right. And some sometimes it is very similar, but uh, that's usually the case that I see. All right. So we covered credit spreads. I wanted to talk a little bit about the VIX. Right. So, again, you, you can't really make any um, any. Um, conclusions about anything changing here because the VIX was up 6.6%, right? And it took out, this is the highest level it's been, right? Now we reached, this was, if you were bullish back here, you could say, aha, you know, um, you know, this, this was a, a big, you know, crazy looking wick on this candle. We don't have that, you know, there was, there was a lot of, um, um, you know, movement in the VIX and it closed very close. It didn't close on the absolute high, but it closed very high to it. Here's the here's the VIX, which is the volatility of the VIX. Again, not as um, didn't go up as much, but still, it's a it's a pretty decent green candle for the day, right? So the volatility of the VIX did rise as well, right? So again, what what I'm doing is you know going through some of these things and looking for some divergences, right? We talked about that last Friday. The VIX was down. Right. And the equities were down. Right. And we we got a bounce off of that very short lived bounce. But we did get a bounce right now. I don't really see any major divergences right now. You could look we could look at breath, too. Um, I'm not looking at all the new um, highs versus lows, but this is the S&P four week new highs versus new lows. There's only seven names that made a four week new high today. And there's there's 192 names to the downside. So, uh, you know, these things are just, con it's, it's just confirming that we've got a very weak market on our hands, right? No major, I don't see any major divergences. Um, if you look at new 52 week, uh, this is 52 week highs. Let's see if we can go here. Yeah, here we go. So new weeks, of, um, high, low, you know, again, just a lot more new, new lows across the board. All right. So that should give you a sense too. So no divergence there either, right? These are, these are all confirming that we've got a very weak market on our hands. All right. Um, 
I was going to talk about a couple areas of the market that I thought were interesting today. Finally, the home builders, right? I think enough of the the, the talk about interest rates. Um, you got a nice, you got a decent break here of the ITB home builders. This has been one of the strongest areas of the market. You could even call this a market general if you like, because these this has been so strong. But finally, um, catches a break here and breaks below the 50-day moving average. I think this could go down to 79.64, right? And uh, maybe we'll see some longs start to exit. Look at the volume on this break. And you can go through these individual names. Um, I was long um, I was long ITB for a long time, and I decided to break it apart. Um, and I went long. Uh, this is in the TTG trend portfolio um, that I also manage. And I, and I went long Pulte, and I went long DHI because I thought that they were better looking charts. But one of the things that I talked about um, back on the 8th was I said, geez, this is actually looking like a bearish divergence, right, with the RSI. So I'm going to explain this really quickly for you guys in case you don't know how to use this for the RSI. Um, now, you just have to keep in mind that it's kind of, a, it's a momentum divergence, right? So when something is making new highs, right, and rolling out like this, you want to see the RSI kind of confirm that. So here's a divergence, right? This is a bearish divergence. The RSI kept on going, the momentum kept on getting weaker and weaker on as this name, um, as it made a new high, right? And I subsequently took those two positions out of the TTG trend portfolio, um, even though like, you know, what, what was kind of difficult in this analysis was that we heard Warren Buffett, you know, and again, the past stuff, these 13 Fs, but, um, you know, cause that the cutoff for that was June 30th, right? But DHI went up on that news that day, right? Well, that was, that ended up being a good place to sell, right? On that past information, right? And, um, and that was here, I think on this day, right? So you got like your last thing, cause look at the divergence here too, right? When this made a new high here, um, closing high, the divergence backed off there. So, so this group, and of course, like the darling of this group, right. And, you know, an important concept here and why I'm going over this too, is, you, you, you know, a, a name or a group could work, work really well for you, but you have to realize when the music, um, when the music stops, right. And to not fall in love with these names, right. There's no reason to fall in love with any, any name, Right. Um, passion is fine. OK. Well, you know, if you've made a lot of money in a name, but you have to realize when when um, it's time to exit, you know, when when it's time to leave a break. And that's what the technicals tell us. Right. When when we do have um, when something has been honoring a trend above its 20 day moving average or above its 50 day moving average and it keeps coming in and testing. Right, like this did test, 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 and then break. Right, that's your point to say that something, you know, something has changed. And, and you know, and the 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 difficult thing, I'm not saying that any of this is easy. You know, these moves are really really fast. Right, you take off for an hour or two. Right, and that break can occur. Um, that's how fast this this uh, this market is. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Apple. Right. Um, I think Apple can get down to 171. Right. Remember, they did not have great earnings. Right. They're also were in a well defined trend. It's the same thing, two completely different stocks, different areas of the market, but same concept, honoring the 20 day moving average beautifully. But as soon as this breaks, you have to get out of the way. Again, I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm not giving you advice, but we talked about that these thin value areas can mean that the name is really going to move for the, for the week. Now I, did I think that this was going to break to the upside? I did. Cause that's the way we started to go in the beginning of the week. Um, and I was in a trade in this and I, I tried to trade and, and I, once it broke back into the value area, I'm like, I got to get out because <laughs> there's, there is going to be a big move. I was pretty sure that a big move was coming in this and I, I couldn't rule out to the downside. And um, I mentioned it in the trading room a couple of times. Once this, once this breaks and the price action is that tight, it's going to really start to move. So I don't think that the move is done here in Apple. And I think 17150 um, because if you look, this is here, right? And again, this may be where buyers kind of come in a bit, right? And that's also on the daily chart. Notice how in this value area, a couple of these value areas, price wasn't even involved, um, you know, didn't get through the value area, let alone the point of control, right? When price doesn't pass through a point of control, that's when a version point of control is made, 
right? Um, but in this sense, the price didn't even get into the value area. So, you know, it just shows you how strong um, Apple has been over the last few months, right? Um, and then, um, you know, one name that I think is really interesting, uh, again, this is when you are seeing declining breath like we've been seeing all August long, right? Breakouts are just going, they're not going to work. Um, they're going to fail and they're going to fail at the breakout um, place. So um, I kept this name on because I did, I do have a stop price on it. I decided to keep this one on, but um, because this is tried one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the sixth time that we've tried to break this like 131.50 level. My opinion is that the more times that you try to break something, you eventually will. Um, but so, but this thing has to just kind of hang out here. If it starts to break, um, you know, the lows of this week, um, then I, I will be out. And, and unfortunately that'll be another, you know, pa paper cut loss, right? But you can't get away with not trying, um, and not having any skin in the game. So this was a starter position for me today. And, um, you know, unfortunately, um, I may have to get, you know, if we see more volatility, um, then I will may I may have to take that name off. Another name that so again, I'm just kind of providing a little bit of context to what I'm in. I'm still in some FDX. Um, this was a name that I put on uh, yesterday. But again, if it breaks that 20 day moving average, I'm out. Right. And um, so again, I don't have a crystal ball. We know that the market has been weak. We don't have any confirmation that the bot that the things are changing we don't really have any major divergences between some of the um under the uh, hood indicators um the other two things that i'll mention here and then we'll wrap up this video is something that i put out this morning about the about the equity put call ratio so we won't get this number out to like sometimes they don't put this number out till seven or eight o'clock at night whenever the SIBO feels like putting this number out but yes fear has been um coming into the market by all the puts that we're seeing. Notice that, so we're not as high as we were back in March, but that was a pretty good low point, you know, very close. So, um, you know, that's why as well, I think that we're checking a lot of these boxes, right? And then of course, I don't have NIMO uh, or NAMO up, but that's also has gotten to the, um, to the time frame of uh, being over, you know, here's what this was, right? And again, it's not updated yet, but we're getting pretty stretched to the downside, right? So it's like almost like a rubber band, right? The, the more and more you stretch the rubber band, right? And the rubber band could keep going. Like we don't know where we are in stretching the rubber band to the downside, right? We're not here anymore, right? We're probably here, right? <laughs> if I had to guess, could it? Could you stretch it further? You you could. Um, and I think that's why it's important to, to watch because the further that you stretch it, right, the more, um, you know, the bigger or, or the 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 um, more momentum of the bounce that you might be seeing, provided that this keeps getting stretched further and further. So these are things to pay attention to. But ultimately, price is number one, right? Price outweighs all of these other factors and indicators. All right, guys, that is it for tonight. Um, again, everything th uh, that I'm talking about is, um, you know, I give you things from my experience, things that I've learned, um, and we kind of go from there. All right, guys, have a great night.